إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده لا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله قال الله سبحانه وتعالى في كتابه بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبس منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلي لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم وذنوبكم ومن يؤتي الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد يا brothers and sisters today we have completed the month of Ramadan الحمد لله we all have fasted we have worshipped Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we have earned the right and the privilege to celebrate Eid al-Fitr. So I congratulate all of you who have benefited from the month of Ramadan. I also wish Eid Mubarak to all of you who have, for whatever reasons, been unable to enjoy the fasting in the month of Ramadan. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Surah Al-Baqarah, and He commands us, to fast in the month of Ramadan and when the days of fasting are over, he says we should celebrate the fasting by glorifying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and sending takbirat in his name. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Walillahi alham. This Eid is a very special Eid because it follows a very special Ramadan. Never never in Muslim history have we ever had a Ramadan like this where all Muslims, nearly all Muslims all over the world have been so decisively cut away from the masjid. Not only have they been cut away from the masjid, but they have also been cut away from the communal ibadat that they have been doing for decades and for centuries. So Muslims have all been quarantined, have been forced into uh, a forced etikaf in this month of Ramadan. This is very unique, very special. Uh, the pandemic, COVID-19, has forced all of us to stay at home. It has disrupted uh, the month of Ramadan like it has disrupted our society, our politics, and our economy. But there's one thing that is good that has come out. It is amazing to see how Muslims in your Islamic center Muslims in our part of the world and Muslims all over the world have taken to this challenge. They have responded to the challenge of a stay-at-home Ramadan by innovating. To me, it is such a delight that I have been so critical of the community for decades uh, for, for talking about Kullu bida dalala, kullu dalala finnar, that every innovation, especially in the matters of ibadat, is a misguidance and every misguidance could lead to hell. But it was such a joy to see that Muslims all over the world were innovating in the mamalas, in the not in mamalas, but in the arena of ibadat. It was amazing to see how we, we accepted uh, uh, virtual Jumas, we accepted virtual khutbas, we accepted virtual tarawih, we have now accepted virtual Eid prayers and also virtual Eid khutbah. So to me it is fascinating. What is important is that we have learned that no matter what adversity Muslims face, we will not abandon the fundamental purpose of our existence which is to glorify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to join together in in glorifying Him, in doing ibadahs, in understanding and appreciating the mercy and love that He brings to us. I also want to address those who have seen this pandemic as a curse 
or a punishment from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I have news for you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in a hadith of Qudsi, which is recorded in Bukhari, Muslim and others, there is muttafiq alayhi, there is consensus about the authenticity of this hadith. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, before he created creation, wrote a note to himself in which he said, Inna rahmati taqlibu ghadabi. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Indeed, my mercy shall always prevail over my anger and my wrath and my punishment. So for those of you who see this, this pandemic, uh, as a punishment from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I have news for you that Allah's mercy will prevail over this punishment. That Allah's mercy not only accompanies this punishment, but Allah's mercy also follows this punishment. So look forward to more mercy, for more compassion, more love, more benefits, more nama from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I am also very proud of the way Muslims have responded, not just in the arena of ibadat, but also in the arena of service. In the definition of Ihsan, when Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was asked by Jibreel, what is Ihsan? He said, An ta'abudu allaha ka'annaka tarahu. He said to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as if you see him. And he added, of course, that if you can't see him, know that he sees you. But the word ta'budu in Arabic also means to serve. So ta'budu Allah can mean not only to worship Allah, but also to serve Allah. And we have understood, scholars and, and teachers of Islam for centuries have understood that to serve Allah is to serve humanity, to do khidmat e khalq to serve, to service, to support, uh, and to do good for the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is also worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we bear witness to enormous acts of compassion, sacrifice by Muslim doctors and, and Muslim nurses on the front lines of COVID-19 who have come out to serve humanity, to serve their fellow being, and many of them have lost their lives in the process, may Allah accept the sacrifice, may Allah give sabr uh, to their families. And to me, this is the most spectacular thing that I have seen throughout Ramadan. The amount of charity that Muslims have given worldwide is amazing. The amount of service they have provided to those who are in need, that is amazing. I think this is the core of what being a Muslim is. If you are a Muslim, the community around you should be glad that you exist and live with them that you are a source of compassion, you are a source of friendship, you are a source of charity, you are a source of support. And that is what was demonstrated by Muslims all over the world by and large, and I'm absolutely delighted. I'm also delighted that the Islamic Community Center, Islamic Community Center of Lancaster did more than its bit this Ramadan. Uh, I have learned from, from Brother Mukarram that you have offered a free iftar every day to whoever needed it. You offer drive-by iftars, you offered uh, grocery assistance to people who needed it, both in the community and outside the community. Cash assistance was provided to those who were in need. Uh, seminars were provided on health issues, on how to battle COVID-19, how to deal with pressures of the society, the stress that some members of the community are facing, and also the amount of interaction within the community, within the safe protocols of COVID-19 is amazing. It required dedication, hard work, compassion, charity, and creativity. And I'm very happy to say that I'm proud to be part of this community from a distance for sure, but part of this community as it does so much service to humanity. Congratulations to all of you. Uh, this season is also graduation season. And a lot of members of the community have graduated from high school or college uh, or postgraduate uh, institutions. And unfortunately, they are not getting the kind of send-off they deserve after the hard work they have put in in, in their studies. So I wish them all the best for the rest of their lives. I hope that they do well. They become an asset to the communities wherever they live. I want to share a couple of ahadith from Prophet Muhammad which emphasize the importance of gathering knowledge. 
the Messenger of Allah said that one knowledgeable person in a community is more formidable against evil than 1,000 devotees and worshippers. The Prophet also said, the best of charity is when a Muslim gains knowledge, then he teaches it to others. The Prophet ﷺ also said, whoever takes a path upon which to obtain knowledge, you go out here, foreign students coming to America, students going to other states, when they go out in the path of knowledge, Allah makes that a path to paradise. Uh, the Prophet ﷺ also says, who goes seeking knowledge that he is in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala until he returns. So knowledge acquisition is one of the most important things that we can emphasize in our community. And so I want to wish all of those who have graduated uh, in this month, uh, congratulations. May this be a double Eid for all of you. For those of us who have done well in the month of Ramadan, Partly it is because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has rewarded us with either resources that will sustain us through this tough time or either with jobs which allow us to work from home and thus our econo personal economy, our home economy is not very disturbed by COVID-19. But there are millions of people out there who have lost their jobs. So there are two things incumbent upon us. Number one, that we should thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the blessings that he has granted us. I thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for everything that he has done for me, especially for this special Ramadan, which has allowed me to grow in many different ways. I also thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is a razik for the risk he has provided to us, to our families, to our communities. So first of all, those who have not been affected Seriously, they should be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they should express their gratitude by trying to help others. We have had a great Ramadan. Now we need to look forward to how we will spend the rest of the year until another Ramadan is upon us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah al duha this is such a beautiful surah. I'm going to read just the last few ayahs that I want to talk to you about it. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim wa wajadaka dalan fahada wa wajadaka ailan faqna fa amma al-yatima fala taqhar wa amma as-sa'ila fala tanhar wa amma bi ni'mati rabbika fahaddis This surah is perhaps the fourth surah that was revealed it might be the first or the second surah revealed in entirety of surah al-Fatiha it addresses the prophet Muhammad peace be upon him directly but everything that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling the Prophet also applies to us. He says, I found you lost and guided you. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala found us lost and guided us with his hikmah and his deen. And we are extremely grateful to us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala found us in need and enriched us. Alhamdulillah, there is no doubt that he found us in need and he enriched us. He finds us in need every day and he continues to satisfy our needs. But then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Therefore, because I have done this to you, do not mistreat the orphan and the needy, nor rebuff those who seek our help, but also proclaim the blessings of your Lord. And I think that is an important thing that all of us must remember going forward that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has found us and guided us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala found us in need and he satisfied our needs. And in return, we express our gratitude to him by helping those who need us, by helping those who need our guidance. I also have one fear about the American Muslim community. MashaAllah, it's a highly educated community. It is well off. It is full of compassion and love. Uh, it is a force for social justice in America. Uh, but there is one aspect of the community that I worry. Uh, and that is that we tend to be extravagant in some aspects of our life, our houses, maybe our vacations. We spend too much money. Some of our weddings are, uh, are as expensive as the GDPs of some small countries. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Imran, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, Lan tanalu al-birra hatta tunfiqu mimma tuhibbun wa ma tunfiqu min shay'in fa inna Allah bihi alimun. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, by no means you shall attain righteousness. Lan tanalu al birra. You will not receive righteousness. Birra is a very powerful concept. It is it is those who have birr are mu'mineen, those who have iman. It is, in my view, above the status of a salihin and below that of a mahsin is one who has birr. So you will not re achieve that level of virtue and righteousness unless we spend from the wealth that we love. This is very interesting, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not just spend from our wealth that we have stored or hoarded, but also from the wealth that we love. Uh, and until we do that, until we spend that, that is important, we will not receive achievements. So for American Muslims, uh, I think this is an important message that we must learn to spend from things that we love, things that we love to accumulate. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is knower of all things. In another ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Asaf says, and this is something that will be applicable today and also in the next few months after the celebration of Eid is over. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Ya Bani Adama Kuzu Zinatukum in the Kulli Masjid. In the Kulli Masjid, you wa Kulu Washrabu Wala Tusrifu in Nahula Yuhibul Musrifin. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying in this ayah that do not be extravagant. La tusrifu. Do not be extravagant for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not love those who are extravagant. And uh uh Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam wa la rasulullah inna allaha wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi ya ayyuhal lazina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima ya ayyuhal lazina amanu uskurullaha zikran kaseeran Dear brothers and sisters, it is time to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept our duas. I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he puts us on the right path. I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he guides us as he has guided our dear Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I pray to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala that he understands our needs and protects us. He protects us from the evil that he has created that is outside and within us. Rabbana ta'ina fi dunya hasanatan wa fil akhirati wa hasanatan wa khina azaban nar. Allahumma taqabbal salatana. Allahumma taqabbal salatana. Allahumma taqabbal siyamana. Allahumma taqabbal qiyamana Allahumma taqabbal ruku'ana Allahumma taqabbal sujudana Allahumma taqabbal zakatuna Allahumma taqabbal jihaduna Allahumma taqabbal minni wa minkum kullu amaluna We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept our worship, our fasting, our charity We pray that He forgives our shortcomings our intentional and unintentional sins we pray that he empowers us to sustain the spirit of Ramadan for months beyond the holy month. We pray that he increases us in knowledge, in empathy, in compassion, and in charity. We pray that he protects us from the evil he has created and the evil that is within us. We pray that he protects us all from the pandemic that is ravaging humanity, our society, and our economies. Those who have lost their lives in this pandemic, welcome them as martyrs, Ya Allah. Those who have lost dear ones, give them patience and solace, Ya Allah. Those who are ill and suffering, cure them, Ya Allah. Those who have lost their livelihood, sustain them, Ya Allah. To you alone we worship and from you alone we seek help. Eid Mubarak to all of you. Please celebrate today with your family and your friends. Indeed, this is a day of joy ordained by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and also celebrated by our dear Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, Eid Mubarak once again.